Good morning. In this video, we're going to cover the concept of cost, volume, profit analysis. Our discussion is moving away from financial statements and looking at accounting information from the perspective of a manager who's using accounting information to make decisions. We're going to go through specific definitions. We're also going to look at the break-even point, contribution margin, and the margin of safety. When we were preparing financial statements, we were considering costs in several specific categories, including cost of goods sold, where we had sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. We then allocated costs into general and administrative. In our cost volume profit analysis, we are looking at costs from three classifications. Variable cost. In this class, we're going to consider variable costs as costs that vary based upon sales volume. Fixed costs. These fixed costs are costs that do not change according to volume. And mixed cost. Mixed costs are costs that actually have characteristics of both variable and fixed. As we are going through this, we need to understand that our analysis is based upon a relevant range. In other words, as an example, if volume triples, very possibly we're going to have to get new equipment, perhaps a new store, a new warehouse, that's going to change the structure of our fixed costs. However, in our relevant range, we are looking at options whereby there is no significant changes in terms of the cost structure, and we're only considering the variables or the cost drivers. Let's first talk about variable cost. Variable costs are costs that vary in direct proportion to the activity base. As we see here, we're looking at direct materials, and the direct material cost per unit is $10 per unit. This is a direct relation in the sense that if we manufactured 5,000 units, the total direct cost is $50,000. And if we produced 30,000 units, our total direct cost is $300,000. We always wanna consider the activity base. This is production. In the next examples, as we're looking at cost, we're going to look at the activity base as our sales volume. If we take a look at these costs in a graph, what we see is that as the total number of units increases, which is in the x-axis, the total cost increases. There is a direct relationship. The unit variable cost remains the same. However, the total cost increases. Let's now look at fixed cost. In fixed cost, the volume does not change the total amount. As an example, if we have a $75,000 a year rent for the production cycle, this rent is not going to change whether we're making 5,000 bottles or 300,000 bottles the allocated cost per unit is going to decrease, but the total cost is not going to change. And this is what we see in this graph. In this graph, our total cost is $75,000. We can assume this is rent or this is insurance or some sort of combination. The total cost is $75,000 for the period. This total cost does not change within this range of what we have from zero to 300,000. On a per unit basis, the cost changes, but from our perspective, as we're looking at our cost volume profit analysis, we're strictly looking at this from a fixed cost and we are allocating this based upon the total amount, not the per unit amount. Mixed costs have different characteristics. There is a fixed and a variable component. This is an example here where there is a specific cost that is the threshold. So if you kind of visualize if you rent a car and you get 150 miles per day, that fixed cost related to the 150 miles per day 
is fixed. However, anything after that, if you're paying 15 cents a mile or whatever it is, that then becomes the variable component related to the total cost. So as we have defined these variables, you note that we are moving away from generally accepted accounting principles and taking a look at cost from their characteristics, whether they be fixed, variable, or mixed. In our discussion, we're going to focus on specific variable and fixed cost and use this information to make specific decisions. Some of these decisions are going to be related to our contribution margin, whether it be percentage or contribution margin per unit. We're going to be then taking this information and using it to identify the break-even point as well as targeted sales. So let's take a look at the contribution margin. The contribution margin equals sales minus variable cost. We can take a look at sales minus variable cost in its totality, or we can look at this as a per unit basis. In the next calculations, we're going to assume the following. We have sales of 50,000 units. We have a sales price of $20 per unit, a variable cost per unit of $12 per unit, and the fixed cost of $300,000. So if we work through the calculations, we have sales of 50,000 units, we multiply this by $20 per unit, and we have total sales of $1 million. Our variable cost per unit is $12. Again, we have 50,000 units, therefore our variable cost is $600,000. Our contribution margin per unit is $8. The $8 comes from $20 sales price minus $12 variable cost. This $8 is multiplied by the 50,000 units and we get a contribution margin of $400,000. We subtract the fixed cost of $300,000 and our beginning point of the calculations is that we have operating income of $100,000. So the first ratio that we want to talk about is the contribution margin ratio. In the contribution margin ratio, we're looking at contribution margin as a percentage of total sales. In the example that we had in the prior slide, the contribution margin was 400,000, sales was $1 million, Therefore, the contribution margin is 40%. Keep this in mind as we're going through the various calculations. When we're looking at contribution margin, the output is going to be total sales. When we look at contribution margin per unit, the output is going to be the number of units. We can use the contribution margin ratio in various calculations. Notice this example. Waddell, which is the company in the prior slide, adds $80,000 in sales orders. The implication in terms of total sales is simply the $80,000 times the 40%. The 40% again is the contribution margin. Given that the fixed costs are not going to change, what we see is that the contribution margin increase of $32,000 replicates itself in an increase in our operating income. Sales increases to $1,080,000. Variable costs represent 60% of sales and our contribution margin represents 40% of sales. So the contribution margin of $1,080,000 times 40% gives us $432,000. Our fixed costs do not change. Therefore, our new operating income with the additional sales of $80,000 is $132,000. Let's now look at a, another situation where we're looking at the contribution margin per unit. The contribution margin per unit is $8. Sales price per unit is $20. Variable cost per unit is $12. Therefore, our contribution margin per unit is $8.
Let's see what happens if sales increases by 15,000 units. The 15,000 units we multiply by the $8 contribution margin per unit and come up with $120,000. This is an increase in contribution margin given that the fixed costs do not change the $120,000 is going to be replicated in our operating income, which is what we see in the financial statement using a variable cost analysis. Sales increases from 50,000 units to 65,000 units with a sales price of $20 per unit. Variable cost remains at $12 per unit and our contribution margin is $8 per unit times the 65,000 units. We have a contribution margin of $520,000. We subtract the same fixed cost of $300,000 and end up with an operating income of $220,000. This is a $120,000 increase over the prior presentation of the financial data. We are now going to use this information for specific calculations. In the first calculation, we are looking at the break-even point. The break-even point is where our net income equals zero. In other words, our revenue equals cost. The break-even formula is fixed cost, which is the numerator, divided by our contribution margin. In this case, we're looking at the unit contribution margin, and we will come up with a value that represents the number of units necessary to break even. We can use the same calculation using the contribution margin ratio. If we use the contribution margin ratio, the amount that will result in the calculation is total sales to break even. Let's look at a specific example. In this example, what we're looking at is we're looking at contribution margin per unit. Unit sales price is $25, variable costs are $15, therefore the unit contribution margin is $10. If fixed costs are $90,000, this means that the break-even point is 9,000 units. $90,000 divided by 10 equals 9,000. When we include these numbers in the calculation, we have sales of $25 times 9,000, which is $225,000. Variable cost is 9,000 units times 15 which is $135,000. Therefore, our contribution margin is $90,000, which is the same as our fixed cost. Therefore, our operating income is zero. In the prior slide, we considered the contribution margin per unit. Let's now look at the contribution margin ratio. If we take $10, which is our contribution margin, divided by $25, which is our sales price, we come up with 40%. When we divide our fixed cost by our contribution margin ratio, which is 40%, we come up with $225,000. Again, whether we're using our break-even point based upon contribution margin per unit, or contribution margin ratio, the end result is the same. One is reported based upon per unit, the other is reported based upon total sales. In the prior example, we were looking at break even. We can use the exact same formula when we are looking at targeted profit. Targeted profit and break even are the same formula, the difference being in break even our targeted profit is zero. In this example, we're asking the question, how many units do we need to sell to have a targeted profit of $100,000? Given that our fixed costs are $200,000,
our numerator are $200,000 plus $100,000. Our denominator is our contribution margin per unit, which is $30. Sales price being $75 and variable cost being $45. When we take a look at this, what we find is the total number of units that we need to sell to reach our targeted profit of $100,000. We can look at the exact same problem, but instead of asking the question, how many units do we need to sell? We can ask the question, what is our total sales that we need to reach the $100,000 mark? To do this, we simply use a denominator, which is the contribution margin ratio. What is the contribution margin ratio? It simply is the contribution margin, which is $30, divided by our sales price, which is $75, giving us 40% contribution margin ratio. $200,000 plus $100,000 is our numerator. We divide this by the contribution margin ratio, giving us a end result of $750,000 in sales. So in the first formula, we're looking at how many units we need to sell. In the second formula, which is this formula, we're asking the question, what is our total sales dollars do we need to break even? The next formula that we need to consider is the margin of safety. The margin of safety indicates the possible decrease in sales that may occur before an operating loss results. What we're considering is our budgeted sales. In this case, our budgeted sales is $250,000. We have already calculated our sales at the break-even point, which is $200,000. And then the other data that we need is our unit sales price. We can calculate the margin of safety from three separate perspectives. The margin of safety calculated in dollars of sales is simply the current sales dollars minus break-even dollars. The margin in safety in units of sale is current unit sales minus break-even unit sales. We get current unit sales and break-even unit sales by taking the dollar amounts divided by the sales price per unit. The final is the margin of safety in a percentage of current sales. In this case, the numerator is current sales units or dollars minus break-even sales dollars or units. We take that result and then we divide that by the current sales dollars or units. I hope that the information that we're covering in terms of definitions and calculations related to cost, volume, profit analysis create value for you. I thank you very much for your time.